Hey, we are red. Red is on. Catherine. meeting to order. Let the record show that Selectman Scanlon is on his way. Selectman Dawson and Constantino seem to be hiding. Hopefully they will join us as we are about to do the Pledge of Allegiance. We all were pointed in this direction. <laughs> Creatures of habit. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So we have three sets of minutes to with you. Mr. Scanlon, we just started a minute late. I just said the Pledge of Allegiance. Should have seen his job, they all turned around, his face there, and was like, wait a minute, wait, where's the play? Yeah. There it is. <coughs> there it is. Caught on camera. Okay, I'll bring the minutes of January 3rd, 2019 to the floor. Didn't realize we were having a meeting within the meeting. Yeah. yeah. I'm just going to shut that door. Well, I told them that we were alive, so. Mm -hmm.
page two, Gail. The last paragraph, second sentence. <coughs> she talked about she talked about through the plowing and trying to through because of the plowing. I could put because of the plowing. Oh, do the do the plowing. Do the plowing. The yeah. integrity. Okay. Say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Unanimous for ayes. Okay. Minutes of Wednesday, January 9th to the floor. Three, four, one abstention. And one. I'm an So you have four. Or, or is it unnecessary to move to the floor when we're. For, for mm -hmm. my, my part, uh, because there are three sets of minutes now, we all know which one we're going to have to do. Did we make that next step? Right. Okay. Motion to accept the minutes of Wednesday, January 9th, 2019, as presented. Okay. Motion and a second to accept the January 9th, 2019 minutes as written. Any discussion? All set. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved.
motion to accept the minutes of January 10th, 2019 as written. Second. We have a motion a second to accept the minutes of January 10th, 2019 as written. Everybody all set with that? Mm -hmm. yes. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Right along here. Okay, so uh, we're about 10 minutes ahead of time. Jason, are you ready? I'm ready if you're ready. Appreciate your time. It's great to be a little ahead. Get the feeling. Oh, it's marking. Yeah, I, got, I felt it squeal when I got within the. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> As a hot mic. Um, brought a little quick hand up. It's, it's actually our extract, abbreviated form of our current zoning ordinance, relevant pages. So if we can complete this exercise in 10 minutes or less, we'll be fine. I think it's academic at this point. All right. So, I'm Jason Wright. I live at 570 West Main Street, and the tax card for that property indicates five mobile home pads, one of which is vacant, one, same of which I'd like to fill with a mobile home. That's a great, you know, additional tax revenue for the town. Um, through a great sequence of events, I am likely able to acquire a mobile home that is up and running and lived in in Jensen's in Tilton, a quarter mile down the road from me. Um, so all I have to do is get it from A to B and I'm in. And they're going to replace it in the spring with a newer uh, unit for them, which represents a sale for them and increased tax revenue for that parcel. So it's kind of one transaction will lift our town taxes twice. Snooze alarm. <laughs> I have the same tone. <clears throat> So, I'm good to go except for Jensen's only stipulation is they just want an okay from the town that it's okay to move it from A to B for whatever reason for their purposes. Um, and I said, okay, so I got sort of a quasi letter from uh, planning. Not, I don't like the content of it and I don't want to get into a personal non-public. So I'll just say that there's an impression in town that you can't bring a mobile home into town that's of a certain vintage or, what, or age or manufacturer or model, whatever. Um, I haven't found that text anywhere. So what I brought is the table of contents. It shows that page 33 is the only thing in our ordinance that has to do with mobile homes. I brought the glossary of terms to show the definition of a mobile home or manufactured housing. And I brought page 33 that only talks about subdivisions and creating parks and so forth. I'm not looking to subdivide. I'm not looking to add a pad. I'm not looking to change anything on my tax card. I'm just going to fill an empty slot that when we bought the property in 06, had five trailers, one left. I'd like to refill the pad. And there's one up and running, like I said, in Jensen's. Um, model year, a manufacturer year is irrelevant um, because we don't have anything that says what you can and can't do relative to model year. Although I've received an impression in town that it had to be a 2000 or newer. Now I see the number 2000 on there, but it has nothing to do with model year. That has to say that anything you do after such and such a date has to comply with 1995 standards. And the big thing with mobile homes is 1976 when uh, the feds decided to create regulations on mobile homes. Some manufacturers were exceeding those standards, some weren't. So the government stepped in and said, in 76 and said, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this. It has to do aluminum wiring and insulation and wall thickness and load bearing and all kinds of other stuff. But um, that just controlled the industry. And again, several manufacturers are exceeding that. So I know of no obstruction that says I can't bring a mobile home from Jensen's to my property. And I'd like a letter from the town on letterhead signed by the selectman that says I have permission to do that in, in accordance with 
this zone regulation. Do you go for the planning on this issue? Don't need to. It's not required. It's not a change of use. It's not a subdivision. I'm I didn't, Pat, and I got a letter from Dari, and if we want to go there, I have that copy of that letter, but I don't want to take up too much of your time. It said that the planning board has no authority over such a transaction. Been with it. Yep. Is this your first stop, or is this your no, first stop? No, this is my hopefully last stop. I went to Dari. I, I have a copy of that letter if you want it. Al seems to feel that everything ha yep, it has to be a, yeah, you can't come into town unless it's 2,000. Oh. This is the most vanilla and non-committal document I've seen in a while. He neither supports nor denies or confirms nor objects or it's pretty much Switzerland. Jason, mm. just a quick question. So Jensen's is asking you for the letter? They just want permission from the town that it's okay to move it and to that, my property. And you gave them that letter and they didn't accept that letter? It's, it, he's not comfortable with that, neither am I. Uh, what, I don't even know if we have authority to give permission. Well, mobile homes in the state have to be moved a certain way, you have to be licensed by the state. And I assume you can... Oh, there you go. Yeah. What's that going to do with us? But, so why does, I don't know, I guess it would be easier for us if we understood why Jensen's feels they need permission from the Did they say? town of Tilden to move it. Yeah. In case it goes trash, whatever, it doesn't come back. Well, you were the one that sold them. You should have known better. Mm. Nice thing. This way they can say, we found mm. a home that fits as uh, evidenced by approval from the local governing board. It still doesn't make that much sense. They, they, want that, they, they run several parks in several states, and you just want their uh, procedure. Yeah, if it's, it's being moved anywhere else, would they require a letter? Say it was okay they took it off? I think it's maybe because it's in Tilton, he wants where it's destined to arrive. Maybe it's where the destination. We also happen to be the departure site, but we're the destination. I don't know. So you haven't talked yeah. to the zoning board when I'm saying the board just down, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. And well, this letter says it, it even the letter says it doesn't pertain. Uh, it doesn't. I can't see yeah. in any way that it would pertain. So can we just give them a letter? Say we have no objections? I'd like to do a little bit more research on it. It's a three-page exercise. Table of contents, zoning ordinance, definition of terms. I'm going to have to start paying park rent in Jensen's unless I get this thing moved. So I've already lost ground tracking down the first letter. Um, what, what homework is to be done other than read the ordinance and say... I want to see if there's any state regulations in moving material from one place to another. Well, there is, but they don't yeah. involve the town. It's, it's a they move these things over the time out of Kenlaw. Yeah. It's not, it doesn't have anything to do with the town. This is why I'm a little confused. Mm. I mean, would it make sense for us to ask Jenny to contact the manager at Jensen's and kind of figure out why he wants a letter? That way we know kind of what to write him. Mm. It doesn't seem like I'm getting all the information, and I think there's some gaps here that we need to fill. So if Jeannie can get all that information, I'm fab, I'm happy with that. Yeah. Okay, so I'll call Jensen's, get the information, I'll draft something up for you. All so to why, why do we I come to a letter from this to a point of us thinking, well, it's a no-brainer, let's just move it across the street. So there must be something from this letter to our way of thinking in between that's stopping this yeah, I don't know. train of thought here. I, I don't know. So I'd like to know why. Why would they be involved in a private decision? So, so he deferred, he deferred rather than, uh, you know, I don't even know if he read the ordinance because there's no reference to it in. I read it. Yeah, I don't know if Dari did. He should have just oh. gone ahead and said, well, according to the Tilton zoning regulation, XYZ. And that, right. our document's not even referenced in that. So that kind of leaves me hanging. Right. Um, Second, he deferred everything to Al. Al's of the opinion that it has to be a 2000 or newer to, to be anywhere. And, that's, and that is not 
that, See, that's that something be, I didn't get. That is so not in the text. Yeah. And I didn't want to get into a personnel thing. I just, you know. That's a thing. Yeah. yeah. Code enforcement yeah. officer makes a decision, that's something that his job is to enforce no, this document, not come up with his and own. He makes decisions about yeah, enforcing and, the and, he can, and he has an opinion and an interpretation of this document that he's up. Yeah. Okay. Why? Well, okay. Yeah, why that's that. This doesn't say 2000 anymore. No. Installed after. Yeah. yeah. So. All right. and it also so says that's one way or another. It needs to be. No. And and and, and the unit in question. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're beyond. I'm happy to call Jetson and find out um, what's going on, and I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll draft something Sometimes for you all to look at on Thursday night. Can you cool. can you talk with the code enforcement officer? I will. Why would you, yes. Why are we going this? Yep. So I will. we're going to meet on Thursday night right. anyway, yep. so we can have that all whatever drafted up. Perfect. Yeah, yeah that's. Done. Jason, can I have a copy of this? Oh, sure. And I'll give you. I will give you. Tom's got a couple of numbers because he works out of Tilton. He works out of Concord. He bounces around, so I'll give you all those. Okay. I'll send you that okay. later on. But yeah, yeah. It, to me, I, it's just kind of and a if, simple. And Thursday's like two days away, so if you could get it to me. Yeah. Tomorrow. I'll okay. send it as yeah. soon as I get my phone back. Though. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, no, thanks. Wasn't there a similar situation? Right, wasn't, wasn't there a similar situation in Windy Hill from across the street? From south to north? I don't bet you that the word install triggers that. Because you could have one that didn't comply. As soon as you move it to another place, you're installing in that other place. And then the regulations would kick in. But the thing could sit where it is now in perpetuity. That's mm -hmm. great. It is like it yep. just says install. Doesn't make sense. All right. Okay. okay. Yep. Um, well, strange one. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate yep. your help. Sure. Hang in there. Yeah. I know you're going to push it out. That's your way ahead of time. Yeah. 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 We're ready for the chief if you're ready for him. Yeah. Move along. Good. Yeah, no, I did the whole week in town flu. I guess hi, it's chief. hi. I guess it's a two week deal. But Yeah, I don't blame you. I catch it. Thanks. Yeah, it's just, it takes a couple weeks, I guess. I was hoping for one, but um, it is what it is. It could always be worse. A lot of fluids. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Enjoy it. Yeah. I think like Sunday will be the two week mark. So I sent, John, I sent over a copy of my report for the week. Uh, this afternoon. It's in the FYI folder. Three. Yeah, usually it comes over Wednesday, but I wanted to make sure you had it for tonight. Um, and I'll just kind of recap. So uh, they're doing good. They're starting out uh, fairly steady. They had a, a busy couple weeks, and in the report, I I kind of mentioned they've they've had some. In the first couple of weeks of the month, uh, year, they've had some like overnight burglaries, I'll call it commercial burglaries. I know the midnight guy caught someone breaking into one of the stores at Tanger Outlets a couple of weeks ago at like four in the morning. And then uh, and then Sunday night into Monday morning, this another midnight officer apprehended a guy breaking into Shop Express um, about two in the morning. He got an alarm, and when he got there, the whole front window was all smashed out. And and then whoever, the guy that broke into the store had like taken a piece of wooden sign that was outside and kind of put it and blocked the broken window so no one would see. But when he went inside the store, he found the guy in there, and he was stealing on a bunch of stuff. So, um, so there's been some of that kind of activity on the midnight shift, and um, but we're 
we're two for two catching them. And, uh, and then just some, some other uh, attempts. We've had some, some burglary activity into cars behind the movie theater while they're in, while the employees are in there. So we've asked them to kind of keep an extra eye out behind the theater down there on the Franklin line. Last week they had a propane leak for a couple hours at the U-Haul uh, location on Laconia Road. And um, uh, I mentioned in there too, uh, detectives have been working with our county drug task force, which just covers Belknap County and most of it's the Tilton Belmont area. And the sheriff said that the, the chiefs and the uh, people involved with the unit had recommended that uh, Nate Buffington be the assistant commander, which is good. It's kind of like a leadership title. He's kind of doing it anyway, but it just shows that his hard work is, isn't going unnoticed. And um, he puts together a lot of the cases for them already. He's got a lot of experience and he's been doing it for years now and so that where the unit's kind of new I think they're relying on his expertise more than um, usual he's just doing a great job and so uh, next week they'll be doing some training in, in town with the DEA on Thursday uh, this weekend they're going to be doing some granite shield stuff between Tilton and Belmont it's part of um, the statewide initiative uh, that uh, is uh, a grant outline for drug enforcement. So if they get a tip that there's drugs coming up from Lawrence and it's getting off exit 20, they specifically target those type of dealers. And so, and they do that, get that kind of intelligence, but a lot of times they don't have the time to be able to just sit there and wait for that. With Granite Shield, they can actually focus just on that stuff, and they do. And so they actually started that grant about oh, three years ago when you were in the set. <laughs> I, I, was just, I was just gonna say you were very involved in that. Um, and so it's it's doing good. I do have one, one question. Yep. Um, his involvement in this organization, what does that take how, how does that take him away from Joe? Is that in addition to his his uh so, from Joe? Yeah, no, it's actually so a lot of the dealers that we deal with in Tilton, they just don't stop at the Belmont line. So if they're dealing in Tilton, they're dealing in Belmont, they're dealing in Laconia. And if there are cases, there are cases anyway. But when he puts them together, he's got that leadership role to say, here's how we're going to do it safely. You know, here's what, here's the day we want to do it. So, but lately the cases that work and have involved all of the towns on either side of exit 20. And so, but it really doesn't take them away from us. It just makes sure that it's done right, I would say, is a better way to describe it. Um, Gives him the leadership <coughs> in the operation. Yeah, and I trust him. He does a really good job with that stuff. Um, and uh, then there was just some other stuff. The, the guys have been, the sergeants, patrol sergeants have kind of, got the officers during some of the slow times to just do some organization. I call it winter house cleaning stuff, which is good and cleaning up the hallways downstairs, organizing and um, storing stuff better, which is always a good thing. The um, water district came by today and they said that they are going to be changing out the water meters. Uh, and so they want us to make an appointment and within a couple weeks they'll come back and change that out for us. It's in the utility room downstairs. They said it would take about an hour. What's that going to cost us? Nothing. Nothing. They're, they're doing ours here too, but we need to change it out for ourselves. Yeah. They're changing it sure? to the job. When well, they do that backflow test, we pay for it. Yeah. Yeah, he said he didn't say there's any cost to the to change cost. out the meter. Um, he said just schedule it and yeah. he'll come and take about an hour. <coughs> Change out your meter, really. If a bill comes through, perhaps it could be flying. See, in Lockman, we charge nothing because we own the meters. And so if the meter mm -hmm. needs to be replaced, unless it's a, uh, something that's obviously the fault of the homeowner. They're upgrading to digital, I believe. Uh, we are, yeah. 
Yeah, we just oh, is that what it is? is right? A digital meter? That way they can just put the scan across it. Yep. Um, so we have the swearing in for Officer Keck tonight. He'll be starting the part time academy. Um, it says as of February 3rd, the way they do it usually is it's a couple hours Tuesday night, a couple hours Thursday night, and then a Saturday morning for the 16 weeks of the academy. And um, he's already completed his firearms practical, the firearms portion and the written uh, 627.5. And last night he completed the taser piece, Joe. Oh, I love the taser piece. Yeah. And um, they, they said he did great. He was the... The only one that could actually talk through it, usually you can't talk. Oh, he chased him? He did. Yeah, but what do you do, like scream? Yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine talking getting paid. Yeah, he, he said it's really hard to talk through it, but they said somehow he was able to manage to talk through it a little bit. But, um, And then also when they're uh, under training, the state police did a program where they put troopers to resiliency training, officer wellness training. Basically, it's kind of give them coping mechanisms that if they go to a stressful call or get involved with a critical incident, that they know how to deal with it and also how to kind of plan in advance and, and prepare for it. And so I got all good feedback from state police on there. So. Uh, we're looking at hosting that in April, um, and it's there's no cost to it. New Hampshire Chiefs actually, um, through their grant for training, is going to be putting it out there to all the people um, it's for no cost. And the way they do it is they actually invite family members too, so your significant other, your kids can come to it, and and it's a the feedback was phenomenal from state police, so. We're trying to get that across the state, and it's something that the chiefs have been talking about for a while, just to make sure that you know we we uh, give them the kind of emotional assistance that they need in the police, fire, and EMS world when they do see really bad things, that they have a way to cope with it and deal with it. Good. You know, and it, I think it's being proactive. Um, matter of fact, I had a, a woman come in today to, to talk about doing that training with us. And um, and then down there too, the midnight shift also had uh, reported street lights out to Eversource. I guess on Friday they repaired those that were 16 out Thanks. on West Main and East Main, and um, they had to order a couple of new heads, but 16 in total. And I think a lot of it is kind of in the school district too, which will help when it gets dark early and the kids leave in school from school events, that kind of thing. And then um, the last thing is it's really quiet on the event front. We don't have anything until um, that annual uh, Winnie Dip in March. And you'll probably notice the guys are already growing their beards to, to raise money for it. And um, Liz has kind of taken that on as her um, event piece for the, for the year. So um, I think other than that, everything else is good. The guys are um, busy but happy. And we're kind of getting ready for that snow tonight. I guess they're talking six to eight or something. I don't know, maybe four to six, depending on where you are. MUR is six to ten, and Noah's uh, three to seven. Yeah, I know. Sweet. Noah's comes out late. Nice, easy prediction. Uh, MUR has been screaming all week, you know, six to ten. They've blown every storm this year. Right, right. So I don't know. Huh? On the low side. On the low side, yeah. So watch out when they call for the next dusting. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. In the first paragraph, you um, list um, the different crimes that they committed or whatever they are. Yep. And um, down in the well, sentence beginning with suspension, it just says disobeying. Could you kind of elaborate on yeah, that? Yeah, sure, disobeying officer. So, Obey. you know, basically if, if uh, the car tries to take off, that's disobeying, so like a short pursuit. Oh. Yeah, or if the guy gets up and tries to run, that's also disobeying. So it's not necessarily a verbal argument. Mm -mm. Interesting. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it sounds, it, it's actually it more, more than it sounds, it I guess. It kind of random. 
Thank you. You're welcome. Joe, is there anything? Any no, I asked my question. Peter, you got it. Pat? How can the paid officer be in the school meeting? He, well, we were going to swear him in last week, but he had to have his training done for the academy last week, the firearms training. And so Luke had him in, I think, on Thursday or Friday. But he's, I mean, he's, yeah, he's technically, he's technically an employee, even though he's not sworn. So. so if he's not sworn, what is it we can do for him? He can, he can get just the training is all he can do. So he can't make him, he doesn't have powers of arrest, but, but he's just, he's got to have that fire training. training. Yeah. So we're okay. He got no, an opinion. We did the PAR, right? mm. and that's already been Yeah, all the paperwork's yeah. done. And that's so the only one other thing that I, I would like to caution you as a selectman is that if you can remind the um, captain and the sergeant that from now until March meeting, we don't spend money on unnecessary items. And looking at the manifest, there's a couple of items in here that I would if I were purchasing them, I would probably say, put this way to March. Okay. It's not earth shattering, but, but a good heads could up. we just pass the word back to them and say, you know, the budget's not clear, it's not been uh, sanctioned by the taxpayers, so it's really supposed to be only operational spending. Yeah. Just a reminder. I know um, Guilford has a citizen law enforcement training thing. Are you familiar with that? Like a probably a citizen academy. Academy, yeah. 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 You know, from police stuff like that, it, you know, to get keep citizens involved. And yeah, we, no, I I really like the idea. I think we're we definitely want to do one. I think the timing is right for us. You know, when we're staffed right and. The challenge, a couple little challenges we see sometimes might be parking if they all come in at the, if the class fills up and we get 20 people and they come in at three o'clock, that could be a challenge. But we definitely want to do it. I like the idea. I, I have one from another police department that I got a copy of it. It's usually, they vary from 12 to 16 weeks, a couple hours a night per week, and then they do a little graduation each week. You know, one week they might bring in a canine presentation, another week detectives do a presentation. And so they get a snapshot of everything we do over the 12 or 16 weeks, and then they have a kind of a little graduation. Um, my mom actually went to one, and she enjoyed it. She went to it with her girlfriend, and she loved it down in Mass. And so uh, she actually got me a copy of, of their program. And uh, you know, we could put it at another facility, too. Yep. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I agree, John. I think it's a good idea. Uh, yeah, uh, I didn't read all the way down to the bottom. Didn't realize there was a second page. I kept on yeah, yeah. Uh, the last thing on your beds, uh, the Winnie Dips coming up for Special Olympics, a wonderful, uh, wonderful thing that you guys are doing on March 8th. Uh, and it says that Officer Murray is heading up the team. Yay. Several officers. Yay. Um, in years past, we've taken police cars and officers on the clock and uh, spent a large amount of money. And I was just wondering if that was uh, going to be the case this year? No, the officers would be off the clock. <coughs> Outstanding. Outstanding. Uh, it just seems like we've spent uh, a lot of money on, on sending them into the water. And I applaud their efforts. I'm all about volunteering. Um, but in years past, also, there's been repercussions, consequences, right. subsequent to the event, and I was hoping to avoid that. Right, right. Year. Yeah, we had a little meeting leading up to the start of getting ready for it. Well, my congratulations to everybody who would be willing to do that. It's, I've been there. I didn't even like being out there with coat and gloves. Oh, Never mind. Oh, 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 yeah. It was with an August day. It was terrible. I'm starting to cook the burgers. That's how I am. 
Yeah. Yeah, this year it'll be cold out there. There'll be plenty of ice. Anything else? I think they're coming down at quarter of. I told them to get here a little early, so. 15, 20 minutes. Well, we have them on the schedule for the swearing in at 6 o'clock, so. I can, I can go through my report if you want. That would be good. All right. So, and you should have a copy of my report from last week. Um, a few updates, but we have the letter of intent um, in the folder for you to sign. I don't know if you want to go into non-public to discuss that or if you are all comfortable just signing it. Um, so that's I'm comfortable with I don't see your, your second... That's because that's coming Thursday, second one. That's last week's. Yeah, so we're going with last week's right now. Right? Yes. Good. This is today. Is two, I was looking at two. Okay. Um, this is Thursday's update. Uh, there's also draft language for you to look at for the warrant. I sent it to you in an email, and you should have a copy in your um, packet we can when Tim comes up after the swearing in, which will be about 6.30, we can talk about it then. But, um, and in the FYI section, we did finally um, get a response from DES about sampling at the Ernie's site, and they have agreed to pay for the next round of sampling in your packet is just an FYI. It, does, it doesn't require you to sign off on it. It's, it's just an FYI for you to know that, uh, uh, I think it's, is it Crideri? Crideri, Crideri. Crideri um, will be doing the work. And they've, uh, I told them I wanted them to wait till you had looked at this before they submit that to DES, their work scope. But uh, DES requires that the scope of work be pre-approved in order to get paid. So, I also mentioned to you two weeks ago, I think, um, Avatar is recommending appraisals on two pieces of property. We do have the quote that's in your packet, uh, one for 6,000, one for 5,000, and I just would like a verbal, your, good to go with having these appraisals done. They're both going to be, you know, appeals. And according to Avatar and the attorney, um, they felt that this was necessary. <coughs> didn't for the case. just do the last one? Didn't I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Do the what? Appraisal. Which, the property? Proxies? Oh. So we have a very recent appraisal for that. Mm, not according to Lauren. What was is that? Yeah. Is it different piece? He's got multiple. No, no, no. He's got multiple, multiple buildings. Yeah. Catherine. 322 right. Main Street. That's. <coughs> but I think um, MCMG is specifically the old bill. Mm -hmm. I think, isn't the other one a different name? Well, I could certainly check with Lauren, but she indicated that it was, it was necessary to move this case along. So. Well, that's what I'm asking. I seem to recall if we had a recent appraisal, I would think that if it was... The year before last, we had the appraisal. And then another, is it? Another bottle, or whatever his name is. So why don't... Why don't I confirm that with Lauren, and then we're meeting again on Thursday. So at least you're good to go on the coals, correct, appraisal? And I'll just confirm with Lauren once again. Yes. On M, C, and G. Yeah, no, on the other one. M, C, and G, yes. All right. Well, I'd like to know what property and... Um, yep. The address is on it, Catherine. 
Yeah, look at the it is. appraisal. Oh, I haven't seen it. I it's don't see it as, uh, as I have as Jimmy's. Yeah, 322 West Main Street. 322 West Main Street. Drive. Isn't, wasn't, isn't Manso 357? I always thought he was because of the caliber. Mm -hmm. So 322 would have to be in that vicinity, not the uh, not riverfront place. Is that the vacant land on the corner of Mill Street? This parking lot? Yeah. I don't know. That would be it. That would be in the area, I think, of 322. I think that would be an incredible price to pay. Okay, it is. It's the, the Riverfront Place. Huh? It's Riverfront Place that they want another appraisal for. That's 322? Yes. And that's... What does West Main Street start at? 200? Because it starts at the tracks. Yeah, you got East Main, Main. Right. Once you cross, so like the old Stafford's would be an odd number. What's up? Yeah, the East East East. On the south side. Enough. I'll check. Can we confirm that? I will check. So, so do you have the map? She said about 20 minutes ago that she was going to check with Lauren and get back to us. Um, but we have lots of time. No, but we're way ahead of schedule. So we can see which parcel. Uh, you got to speak up, Jeannie. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, I met with Energy, actually Gail and I met with Energy Efficient Investments uh, on our town buildings to have them do an audit. And they have our electric bills, our heating bills. They're coming on Friday and they're going to look at all the town buildings, the lighting outside, and come back to us with their um, report and recommendations. But according to them, and I did check with the, uh, the City of Franklin, they've done work for the City of Franklin and actually several other municipalities and have been able to save them up to 75% in their energy costs. So we'll see what they come up with. You'll see in my FYI that uh, John Rad again offered to provide free training for ZBA. We desperately need it. And planning board members. So... He's ready to ready to do that. I thought that was very nice. I'm into that. Okay. And then uh, I guess it was Monday, Catherine. Mm -hmm. so yesterday. Um, <coughs> met with uh, DES and DOT, Jim Cropsey, uh, Senator Guy to set it up. And I would say, Catherine, you can weigh in, but I'd say it was a very good meeting. It, it, we definitely moved the ball and. Uh, we have DES and DOT willing to work with us so that we can get that uh, that accident site fixed. So do we know who owns what where? Catherine. No, we, um, we, we decided to leave that aside for now okay. in order to get the claim in and get the project moving forward and get the repairs done. They did agree that we should get the repairs done since it was an accident. None of the entities, state, town, private, will be paying for any of it. <coughs> Excuse me. They, um, a couple of ideas with right now that we hire an attorney to investigate it. Right now, currently, on our records, the town does not own it anything anywhere near that. The sidewalk was gone. It was crossing over somebody else's property. We've been taxing that person for that property for quite a few years. We definitely don't, town didn't build the wall. We don't own the road, so I don't know why they would suggest the town pay for that investigation. See if we're suckers. But just so you know, it, as Jeannie said, it was very productive. We are going forward to get the claims made, get the ball rolling, get the wall repaired, get the fence repaired, trees replaced. That, I'm still a little, little confused. If we don't own any of <coughs> and, and I mean, we don't own any of it, we're not responsible for any of it, why are we being... Because... We're not. No, no, uh, we're not. But there is question the 
true green, their insurance folks, we need to provide, we need to say, I guess, in a letter or something that we give um, I guess the owner the authority to cross over to work on the site even though we don't own it. I don't I don't know how to make that any more clear. <laughs> because the sidewalk was there. Right. It used still to be. Yeah. 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 If we own the fence, it's over we've the We've the fence. We've been this managing the property. I think the insurance company would just be more comfortable if they knew that the town recognized that the property owner owns the property. Owns the property. Okay. And was going, he's going How to is it that we ended up with a sidewalk on his property? Well, the sidewalk. And have had one for since I was a kid. When well, it was still the mill. Period. It's a sidewalk. We've been maintaining it. We have a couple of those anomalies in town. Yeah. At one time, I was way kept walking across it. And maybe that's not it's as simple so as it is. Yeah, yeah. It only went to the mill. Okay. So the so goal is, <laughs> after that conversation, is to have that repaired before the kickoff of the 150th. June. So we've made some progress. Uh, I don't have uh, anything else on my report. I did want to ask, I got a little bit of feedback, theme, dedication for the town report. There was some discussion about the 150th. I think somebody made a suggestion that we put some old pictures up first, but since nothing has happened yet, and the 150th actually doesn't start till June of uh, 2019, next year we would be doing well, the 150th. I think what we have to remember this annual report is for 2008. Right, right. right. Although I, when I first saw it, I thought, that's a great idea, but it's a great idea for 2019. So mm -hmm. So, any ideas for a theme? Any but, ideas for a dedication? But I also use my town report to know when Amnesty Week is, Catherine, which is this year. Oh, it's a conundrum. It is. <laughs> no. This has been a tough one. Um, we done. We've had a lot of people retire and that, and a lot of fresh faces that have, and new just in the past year. So it's like um, new beginnings to pathways and um, that might be something to you know, look at. But one fifty fifth impressions. Well, that's how about conserving me. spaces? You have Buffalo Park. You have Sandy Run. You have a lot more green space in the town of Tilton. Conserving spaces. So all those scales. First impressions. What are we doing? And that kind of leads into that first impressions uh, thing. The starting of all that. Like that idea? Something you chew on until Thursday. Yes. <laughs> I think you have a lot of new things that are happening in Tilton. You have a lot of new committees that have started up your first impressions. You have 150, you have a lot of people that, you know, that have started in Tilton. We have a lot of new, you know, green space here, conservation. So there's a lot of ideas in that respect. I, I really like those kinds of ideas. Okay. Well, why don't, why don't I work on something? Short list. A so short list. I think that um, the town report provides people with information. I think one of the things that people ask me most about is, what can you do in Tilton? Oh. And there's a lot of things that we have to offer in Tilton. Even the senior center is something we have to offer. Yes. So I'm thinking that maybe we could collage. It was scary. Well, we could, you know, take the, our parks, our mm -hmm. senior center, um, even the Pines Community Center. Even though it's north, it offers that recreation. We have. Um, walking trails in Buffalo Park. We have events in Riverton Park. We have 
on a calm day we have a lot of things that take place in Totem that it's like Peter was saying, we find out when Amnesty Week is, well, maybe we could use our town report to provide Say how people great with. Is. Oh, we're breaking the it shirt. is. It is great. We're breaking the middle. We are breaking the heart of New Hampshire. The bicycle park in North Yeah, <laughs> that's right. um, yeah. bicycle so park. It's a wonderful thing. It's great up there. The, we have an individual with that. the walking trail. They're, they're relative to dedicating the. Um, those are some great ideas, and I'll put something together and bring it back to you. Uh, relative to dedicating, uh, there was a suggestion made having it be uh, dedicated to first responders. Oh, I had one name. Okay. Well, you could, yeah, still do the name, Pat. We're still, yep. we're still discussing. I'm just, I was, I, I've been thinking. No. Right. I so, but time is running short. Yeah. So. Let's see if we can come up with it. I'm just trying to think great. of ones that we have and we haven't done, the people that have really given to the community and, and it's kind of a Do you do a citizen of the year, a volunteer of the year, or anything like that? Oh, some day does. Some of them day does. Okay. Oh, we have to include last year's in this report, right? Yeah. Because they were the two of these out of the if you go by Catherine's, it's telling us what happened last year, yes. Passing around a 2018 on it. It's not, that, that, that was just an idea. It's an idea for you. What is the free training that's coming up that you're planning on training? Um, John Radigan is going to. Um, We're going to train this to do. I mean, usually there's specific grandfathering. I think, I think if you. I think if there's um, something specific you want to suggest, okay. he'd be open to it. He didn't. He didn't give any specifics. How are you? All right. Here's my other suggestion. Yeah. All right. I'm done with my report. Unless you have any questions for me, because I think the the uh, folks are arriving. No. Any questions for me? John, Mr. Chairman. Look at all the beards coming in here. Are these beards? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Y'all sat with me? I think we're all okay. set. Yeah, we'll, um, yeah, we'll be done this one. Why don't we uh, take a brief recess okay. and um, set up? Okay. Oh, is uh, he here? He's not here yet. Yeah, he's not here yet, John. He's not here yet. Oh, yeah. Yep. We have four there. Draft number one, 2018. Right. Draft. Great. Most of those are standard from the last last year. Um, one, two, three, uh, four. Article number five typically has. No, I'm serious. Yeah. I'm very serious. I can see that. Article. Anyone listening to me? No. Uh, yeah. Who are you? Who are you? Oh. What were you saying? My name is Jeannie Forrester. Oh, hi, Jeannie. Hi. Hello. <laughs> um, ar articles Sorry, one. I kept getting into the room. I had to look. Articles one, two, three, and four. All right, I'm just. Articles one, two, three, and four are the same. Are from last year. Yep. They're just standard. Article five, which is your revaluation capital reserve fund. It in the past, it's been funded at twenty thousand. Tim is recommending zero, and I'm recommending in between because there's a, there's a good amount built up and Tim will have that number I didn't bring it up with right. me uh, but I'm recommending 10 he's recommending zero and that's a debate that you all can have well, article 6 is the same it's interesting Qu because question first. yes Good. did we get anything back from them as to if they've done anything you know what they did last year with the 2000 we've given them 
Okay. You're on the wrong one. Article 6? Article 5. No, 5. Article five. No, you're talking we about Article five, 6. We the 6, and I... Well, you told her to hold on on 5. Okay, so uh, we're all, okay. let me just clarify this. We're done with Article 5? Okay. No. I you have a question on Article 5? Go ahead, Pat. Article 3. 5. On Article 5, in the past, we have gone through the fifth round on the fifth year, and we've put some monies in and not done zero because that makes it easier spread out over five years rather than a zero. So the answer to that... Um, it would catch up with us right, down the line. It will catch up with us down the ride. So I like your suggestion of putting in uh, an amount there instead of zero. Okay. Great. Just to see. Thank you. All right. Catherine, go to three. Catherine, would you like to discuss Article 3? Three? Three? Thank you. <laughs> did the amount to be put into that article, did it come from the Public Works Director by way of what he plans on purchasing? No, that... We've had... Yeah. No, that came from uh, your Finance Director. And it was the same amount same that amount. you had last year, and he's recommending the same amount this but year. I believe we made purchases. Major purchases. Major purchases. Traded in. So let's see if we, we can hear from the and finance. The public we should have a conversation yeah. with the public works. Okay. okay. It's the same get his input on that. Article, article four is the same question. That amount is usually based on what is planned to be repaired. Good, Good question. And I think and somebody, I, somebody I've heard has been asking for That's right. the, the, lay, the plan. The update. Right. Be we can all look at Peter. He's the so one. So we'll have. Yeah. So Jeannie, if you could ask the uh, public works yep. director to come on, and he's on coming. Articles three and four. Yep. And he'll he'll be here on Thursday. Article okay. six, which you hit on. We usually get a recommendation from the conservation commission as to an amount of money to put in there because I believe they are the agents for that fund that they want. I thought, isn't this the Lake Winnesquam group, John? It's the MILF no. group? No. no, no, they go to the Conservation Commission first. Every year we've been Do putting... Do we have a Conservation Commission member now? Yeah, John. Yeah. Aren't you the um, for it? Yes, we are. Okay. And typically we've always been putting that amount into there, and we found that was a good amount, and we like, continue to funding it then. How much is currently in the fund? Uh, and we, how much has been used? I believe we're down to zero, and um, yeah. I would have to check. Use it. Yeah. We've been using it um, for um, a good part when to do our portion of Lake Winnesquam in order to refund it so that we can get the results from the Lake Winnesquam to start moving towards funding stuff downstream on Lake Silver Lake. Do you have the report on what's been done? We can get back to you, but probably not before the Warren articles. No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, I'm good, thank you. My concern would be if we're doing the Winnesquam end, if you don't, haven't done the Laconia, the upper end, it's going to keep regrowing because it's going to flow downstream. You've got to get well, the but all this, this is only to appropriate the money that's available for groups to use to do that. If and the $2,000 goes into the account, and then um, they apply for that money, and then the, we reimburse them for it. So but, but if, if, if somebody that, wants to do something, then they can, but we I, don't I, encourage them to and take control of what they're doing. But it doesn't make sense to me to do it on the south end if the north end hasn't been taken care of, and it's coming from north to south. However, it's west. just volunteers that want to want to do it. Volunteer organizations are doing it, so we're making the money available. If anybody wants to step forward to do it, we encourage that by having funds available. So, okay, if we I, can I get some sort of report, a the math, what they're doing, is it uh, manual? Is it with a uh, pump? Is it with chemicals? Yes, you can. You can go ahead. Um, well, what the, what the, Okay. Um, we have about one or two minutes, but just to let you know that the amount, whether the two thousand dollars is appropriate to put in there. The other part I think is important for the selectman to know is we expanded it beyond milfoil and included in other invasive species. 
so that's been relevant, but a recent group has formed a nonprofit LLC and come together and put together what I think is probably the most robust proposal we've seen. And we've also been participating through Chuck and Kathy and others going to their meetings to talk about the full extent of Silver Lake, understanding that the whole lake system is impacted and Silver Lake ends up being essentially a milfoil dumping ground. So yes, they have a proposal that involves diving and picking, using the, the other tools and chemicals, depending on the extent if they're actually bringing in the proper scientists, which I think has been a much more thorough review as our participation in the community than we've seen in the past. Because we've had other people come in and say, I'm going to take a pontoon boat out on the lake, and I'm going to go pick milk oil. But they didn't have any expertise in the area. Do you know if they've used the boat on Silver Lake that's uh, gone from Gardner's uh, Grove over to uh, old Betty Pierce's house? That particular project is not being managed well, so we have not advised okay. the town in uh, sponsoring that. Right. If they came forward with a much more sophisticated and responsive proposal, we feel like we'd be paying the tax dollars uh, okay. a service, but we haven't seen that yet. Thank you. Thanks. Mr. Chairman, if you want to stop there. Yeah, I think that's perfect. <coughs> okay, so we're going to take a recess while we have a swing in ceremony.
Kelly, you good? We're good. We're good. Can everyone bring it in for me? Sure. Bring it in. Hello. Chris, nice Chris. <laughs> If I lose my voice, I'm just getting over a cold, but I'll do my best to motor through it. So um, tonight we have a kind of a special selectman meeting uh, where we get to uh, swear in a new part-time officer, uh, fresh out of high school. Elementary, elementary school. <laughs> and um, he's so uh, just to give everyone a little bit of background about. Our, our new part-time officer, Eric Kemp. So Eric uh, approached uh, Detective Buffington probably sometime last year, actually, and asked if he could uh, go through the process. We suggested he do some ride-alongs and make sure that it was something he was going to still be interested in. So he did several, rode with just about everyone on the department. When he finished, he wasn't scared away and said he still wanted to be a part-time police officer with the town of Tilton. Um, he, he loves the town, he loves our department, and he's an incredibly uh, invested community person as well. I think everyone knows that. And so he began the, the background selection process, and like a, a kid right out of high school, he crushed the PT test and did all the rest of the testing that all the new candidates would go through, and uh, passed everything with flying colors and came with glowing recommendations from detectives and all my officers that we bring him on board as a part-time officer. And so just a little bit of, I think probably everybody here knows Eric, but just a little bit of background. Uh, he attended Burke Mountain Academy and then uh, graduated Columbia University in 1996. Then he went on to further his education, uh, Cal State Fullerton and George Fox University and got his doctorate in 2006. Um, Eric's also part of the community management team with me. He's on a lot of boards and committees in town to make Tilton and the Winnesquam School District, I think, a better place. We work, we work close together with the Office of Student Wellness Committees. And um, he's agreed to come on part-time and kind of fill in when we need him, working nice weekends. Holidays, he said, pretty much any time we're in a bind, he'll step up, and so we're very excited to bring him on board. I think most everyone here has known him for a long time, and I'm excited. Uh, and so here we finally get to this moment, Eric, <laughs> which has been building for a long time. So uh, tonight, Selectman Constantino is going to be reading your oath of office. Did you notice when you said the time where he's going to come on? Nights, weekends, holidays. His wife had this biggest grin on her face. You notice it? Huh? Bye, Eric. <laughs> All right. To the inhabitants of the town of Tilton in the county of Belknap in the state of New Hampshire, whereas there is a vacancy in the position of part time patrol officer in the town of Tilton, and whereas we, the subscribers, have confidence in your ability and integrity to perform the duties of said office, do hereby appoint you, Eric Keck, to the position of part-time patrol officer for the town of Tilton, New Hampshire, which shall be effective as of January 17th. And whereas upon your taking the oath of office and having this appointment and cert certificate of said oath of office recorded by the ta Tilton Town Clerk, you shall have the powers, perform the duties, and s be subject to the liability of such office until another person shall be chosen and qualified in your stead, given under our hands the 29th day of January in the year of our Lord, 2019. So, repeat after me. I'll raise your right hand. I, Eric Keck. I, Eric Keck. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully. That I will faithfully. And impartially discharge. And impartially discharge. And perform all the duties. And perform all the duties. Incumbent on me. Incumbent on me. As a part-time patrol officer. As a part-time patrol officer. For the town of Tilton, New Hampshire. For the town of Tilton, New Hampshire. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to the rules. Agreeably to the rules. And regulations of the United States Constitution. And regulations to the United States Constitution. In the laws of the state of New Hampshire. In the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. So, uh, Eric has chosen 
Jim, his wife Beth, to come on up and do his batch pinning. So good. Right. Yep. The age of the doll hair. We are knocked over one thing today, so hey, you're on the roll. No, I know. <laughs> well, tell Julie to call the patrol. <laughs> oh, it's upside down. <laughs> ah, I made you look. <laughs> I had to. I was waiting for him just to do it and just listen to me and just turn it. He'll learn eventually when he's with me riding around. How I am. Everyone, uh, Gail put out a lot of refreshments and drinks. Help yourself. And John. No sense in taping this right. Actually, I just, you know, I know what you're doing. I knew that you didn't look like this. Unless you mean she just grew up. She didn't see what can happen by it. But I don't know what I'm talking about. Hello, Nina. 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 Hello, well, apparently not. Yeah. 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 Budget for 2019, and Hayward is here, uh, Director of Community Services. Yeah. Yes. Hello. Thank you so much for uh, inviting Hello. us. I want to introduce Patty Kirk. She's our new Franklin Area Center Director. She replaced Gail Lyman, and then this is Michael Tabery, and he is our Deputy Director. Yep. And I have some handouts for you each. Should I hand this out to everybody? Yep. Okay. Anyway, uh, first 
thing is, there were really good quality services that community action program has been helping out, not just our community, but all the communities around here, whether it be kids or elderly or anybody that's in need. We've always known that CAP's been there for us. It's so important part of our community. Um, one of the things, so we're doing the budget, we're going through a couple uh, of budget committees so I can, we're looking at the funding amounts and we could not figure out the formula and how that works out. So um, before we changed anything in what we funded, we wanted to make sure we had a clear understanding of what's going on with the, the funding. Sure. Of the well, I thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to speak to you all. Um, so I gave you a packet, um, and the top is an overview of services, and it's more in-depth than the one that we we gave you when we requested the $26,000. Um, it includes all of the services that we, CAP provides to Tilton, not so much just Area Center, um, but all the services, Head Start. So it just gives you a better understanding of the full scope that Community Action is providing for the town of Tilton. Um, I thought that was important for everyone to see, you know, how many people are served, what value that is monetary-wise, um, and then the total number of services that we provide. And then the second in your packet is just a quick overview, so if you see a service that you're not sure about, you can look. The next page just gives you a little synopsis. And then the book that we gave you is the full, full book of every service, so you can read more in depth if you choose to. And then the third is um, I provided what we receive from every town in Belknap, Merrimack County, not just the Franklin Area Center, but I included every town. So you can kind of see the different amounts that each town gives us. And then I just provided a two-pager of the history of Belknap, Merrimack Community Action, in case anyone doesn't know our history, it's a quick two-pager. So that's your packet. Um, as for the funding, so historically funding has been specific amounts, and we had, we upped your amount a year and a half ago, or almost two years ago, um, in the request for a couple reasons. One, um, things cost more money to run, and our Franklin Area Center is year-round, which is something that is unique to Belknap Merrimack. A lot of the other CAPs don't have year-round places people can go. Fuel season is kind of a shorter season, so they're either temporary or they close down in the summertime or they're not available Monday through Friday, those kinds of things. Um, so that's one of the reasons that town funding is so important because we want to keep something year-round for all of our residents. We think it's really important for all of them to be able to come somewhere. Um, and the area centers are also a referral place. So say someone comes in and they aren't interested in fuel, but they need to know more about Head Start. Yes? So with seven towns in one city, you collect 52000 yet Tilton pays half at 26000 and that's supposed to be fair? Yes, you guys do pay. We pay half. And we get not proportional benefits by any means. Um, one thing I did want to sh show you guys is Franklin gives us 6000 cash. What was one of the questions that was brought up? Uh, but Franklin also gives us in-kind, so if you see on the handout that I gave you, the total amount that Franklin actually gives us is closer to $29,000 with the in-kind. Well, unfortunately, I did a spreadsheet based on information given previously, so... Okay. Well, that, that information was requested after I had okay. given... Well, I've got Northfield gets 294000 we get 208 on those old figures. They only pay eleven. we pay twenty-six. so again, it's a big disparity. Yes, it is. I have no problem paying my fair share, but this doesn't look anywhere near fair. How do you go about requesting funding? Did you request $11,000? Um, yep, each, so each town we request a certain amount. Um, Northfield, it was 11000 They gave us what we requested. Why? Why 11000 you, You've asked for 26000 from us um, and 11000 across the river. Um, yet we received uh, $60,000 less in benefit. I was just curious how that, that's my question. I understand Franklin yep. uh, provides a center and you know, all the things that go around yep. that, but even that, their, their benefit is over a million dollars and they pay $29,000. Right. Our benefit is, and hallelujah, 210 ish 
and we pay 26. So how is it that you guys figure out how much to ask for each municipality? Right. So historically, these are the numbers that uh, have been presented to me. I don't know where they came from from, from the, the beginning, and that's just the honest truth, is that historically these were the set numbers. Um, what I've been looking at is how to, to make them a little bit more fair. Um, so, and honestly, when you brought this up after the meeting back in November, um, I had figured that this conversation would happen where we need to be a little bit more balanced. Um, I didn't think, however, we would be zeroed out, which I think is what I was told. Um, we haven't done our yet. Okay, okay, so. There was talk. Right, right. And I understand, again, that you guys do pay more than the services you receive. So I wanted to come here tonight so we could really have this conversation on what is a fair amount to ask for. Um, and again, historically, coming into this, this being my second year of doing this, um, where I'm still trying to, to make sure that across the board these are um, fair. Did they appear fair to you as close to land? No, not all the towns are fair. Absolutely not. Um, we have other towns. If you look um, in the Meredith area, they pay it's very similar to you guys, a lot more than you know their allotted services. Um, so again, wanted to have this conversation so we could at least have open dialogue on a number that we can come across that is fair for you guys and for us. Personally, personally, me only here, um, I don't make twenty six six thousand dollars. It's unfair to, for what we receive. I mean, that ten percent, less than you know, eight percent, whatever it is um, that we pay for what we get. Okay. I get that. If everybody else is being treated in kind, right. that's the only the fairness of it. Yep. You know, and if you treated everybody the way you treated Tilton, you'd have an abundance of money, wouldn't you? <laughs> we would. You so, would. And, and I'm and well, I'm new to community action, not to community action, but new to Bell Net Merrimack and the town voting situation only as of October. Uh, so some of this is new for me. Uh, I've been with community action for. Uh, over 12 years in the state of New Hampshire and, and know its value, its importance, and, and the uniqueness of what community action does. Um, some of these numbers probably go back many, many years as to, you know, relationships that were formed in places, you know, and, and the numbers that have been presented, and in some cases, probably asked for a lot more in the past. We said, no, we don't have it. Our budget won't support it, or different points of view came across. I think that you know one of those things that uh, Beth is commenting on is that we are trying to take a new look at this, or certainly will be um, moving forward uh, when we come back to all the towns next year to take a look at. We got to look at populations, tax rates, tax bases. I think you know, it, you know, a number of these. Um, I take it the tax bases are substantially less than. Perhaps. You know, I know, I know Danbury, for example. The, the res number of residents in the town of Danbury. Uh, 20 years ago, when I met my wife, who's from there, it was somewhere in the city of 150 people, she said. It's probably greater now. 1,200. Is it 1,200 now? And what's the population of Tilton? 35, 55. 55. Okay. Um, so I think we need to take a look at some of those numbers and, and re-approach most of these communities, in many of these cases, probably with a because to lose these funding amounts means that we ultimately are going to probably lose cut programs. Yep. It programs or bus. staff. I get it. Um, and, and we certainly don't want to do that. We will certainly not, as you can see here, punish a town because they said, sorry, we're not going to pay for that. Because sometimes it's political, you know. But if you don't go to ask them, they don't have the opportunity. Nobody's going to stand up at town meeting I, and say, you know what? I think seven thousand dollars is not enough money for cap. Let's raise it to twenty. Nobody's going to ask that. I agree with you. Um, if, they, if they complained about ha having to pay twenty as a fair share percentage or yep. whatever, at least there's a conversation on the floor of their town meeting, and somebody has to yep. explain what we get. This is what we're getting. This is what we're asked to pay, and what happens if cap goes away? Or you know. Um, yes. I understand about CAP. I've worked, uh, Joan Moretto and Pam, and all of that, uh, I've worked with for years. Yep. Um, and have a lot of respect. Karen Hayes down there in, yep. in Concord, uh, 
a lot of respect for what you do. I would love to see the funding formula a little bit more proportionate. Yeah. And we're not arguing that piece as well. No, and um, we will be reworking that for next year and approaching all these towns in that manner and so that we can. I, I agree with you. I mean, I look at that too and I say, um, Seems odd, doesn't it? No. Um, <laughs> but, you know, unfortunately that's where we are today as I've arrived. Um, you know, recently to Belmont, Maryland. Um, the amount of funding we've requested is you know, we've certainly looked at our budgets and we're looking at what next year looks like with that. I'm hoping you won't cut it this year. Um, I won't ask if you we have this conversation on. again next year, um, it probably won't be as late. I hope from this day. And I, um, I would respect that. I'm going to vote on the 26th. I want to pay my fair share. I think we've been taken advantage of for years because we didn't ask. Well, you take your budget, you can either base it on population, take your parameter, but it takes just a minute to figure out how much to ask each town. When towns are paying zero, 2100, 29 for Franklin, the seven plus the in kind, 2200, 11,000, 2000, 2200, 26,000. Sounds uh, like someone's being treated uh, unfairly. I'm looking more toward the 11,000 like Northfield. Why is it that Andover doesn't pay anything? Uh, we, can't, we can't force a town to, to give us money. Um, so, Andover. What did you ask for? The 2,000, yeah. Um, and again, it, it is dependent. There's been years where we have received it, and then the next year we don't receive it. Um, and again, this is only my second year coming in, so historically, I'm working off what I, what I have in, in my files. And in the past, Franklin's done up to 22,000, I believe, in dollars, so yes. it's all over the place. Yeah, Franklin zeroed us out, and then we have slowly worked with them on a cash basis to up I, I what they give us. I that's when ours went skyrocketing. I don't have that information. Pat, No, I think that community action has come here on a good faith effort to answer our questions because, um, you know, they were notified and said, we have some questions, we have some, cons some concerns that we were going to cut the budget and uh, we, that we were going to zero the budget out, budget committee. And they've come here on a good faith effort. I don't feel that we should, you know, I think we should listen to them. I think that they have some good points. They've made an effort to answer our questions. They've said, uh, you know, this year, with their budget already in place, it would be detrimental to them if we if we cut them uh, out of their asking what they're asking this year. It would probably affect the the most vulnerable of our taxpayers right now. So you're saying they're going to cut our services if we cut our money? That'll look good in the press. We're paying Did more. I say that? You're insinuating. No, but what I don't like is every other word out of my mouth and every other out of out of their mouths, you've interjected something extremely negative and very unprofessional. So what I would like to propose is that perhaps maybe you allow them to finish their presentation. And then we decide on our own, and if we want to backstab each other in, in a discussion on our budget, we can do that privately and unprofessionally with the five of us instead of making asses of ourselves in front of our guests. So, you know, they've come a long way to present this to us. They're an amazing organization to our most vulnerable citizens. Mentally ill, disabled, you know, I just, seniors, I just can't even, so, they're as valuable to us as the Franklin uh, visiting nurses. So, so what that's my point. What, what plans do we have? Um, so, they've already acknowledged that they'll fix it next year. Yeah. So, as you can see, it's an 
and it's in the budget committee and all that, there's a lot of questions as to why, and it doesn't seem, and to me, it seems like it's just kind of one of those things that you guys are fresh to this and you don't have the exact answers of your As to why numbers expressing. were. Yeah. yeah, so what are your, what can we do as budget members and selectmen, how can we present it to the voters when they ask the same questions to us? Because although well, Peter's voicing it, but there's probably a lot of voters in town that are feel the exact same way. And you probably show you on this like this. Uh, so what can we do? How can we present it when we're faced with the same questions? It's a tough thing. Um. <laughs> None of this is very easy. No, it, it seems isn't. like it's, it's a little. Um, and and I, I guess in my, my personal thought on that is looking at the whole thing and what does that money leverage? Uh, again, it's not that, oh, if you don't give us as much, we're not going to do as much. We will do as much as we always can, um, which I think has been demonstrated there. Um, if you look at what you contribute and the numbers that you know she's reevaluated and looked at, we pulled recent numbers. We're talking twenty six thousand is leveraging against four hundred thousand dollars for conservative services, and that's a conservative number. Um, there are some that are part of the, um, you know the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, WIC, um, and a number of those other programs. They vary from year to year and can definitely go up uh, in terms of need. So I, I understand that people can say, how do, we, how do we explain that? As we've proven, we, we, we can't write this. All we can do is point towards, here's what we're providing. Here are 70 services throughout the counties of Brown Rapid Merrimack County um, that, that we provide um, to help the most vulnerable, to help low income, to help those with disabilities, to help the elderly and to help the elderly stay in their homes as long as possible, or in their communities as well. Um, transportation. Community action is unique in that it is locally controlled, in that the federal government, although most of our funds come from the federal government, the federal government does not tell us how or what to spend our services you know, specifically on. They recognize that we know our communities, we work with our communities, Washington, D.C. doesn't know the details of what's needed in each location. Um, so that's why we are able to provide custom services based on the needs of our constituents, of our, um, the, the residents of, of our counties. There's five in the state of New Hampshire, and they all have very different programming. Some of it overlaps, Head Start, Fuel Assistance, Weatherization, and some of them are very unique. Uh, we're the only one that actually goes on Concord area you know, transit. Um, we're the only of the community action agencies that run um, as much transportation as we do. And a lot of that is because of the needs of Belknap and Merrimack counties. So I suppose to summarize and answer to your question is look more to here's what we're able to provide. And if the towns across the board start cutting all of our funding, we're just not going to have the ability to provide more. It's not that we're going to refuse to provide. But the monies you're asking from the towns, even the list you gave us, don't look equitable. But they're, they're, I mean, I, when I looked at how much Concord is paying, I'm like, wow. Oh. <laughs> and just so you know. So I, and then it, it, it bothers me that I, I appreciate the fact you've only been there a couple of years, but yet you sent the, re, sent the requests out this is your sheet and didn't give it a, a thought as to what you were asking the taxpayers to give you, you know, in proportion to what our sister town across the river is giving. So, I mean, it's just not equitable to me. It, it, I have a hard time with that. I, um, I mean, I appreciate that you need funding, but when you go out to ask the taxpayers, it's not us, it's our taxpayers that you're asking them to support your program. It should be equitable across the board. This is so skewed. So skewed. And of all the outside agencies we looked at, this one is. Well, 
I'm guessing concrete gives you buildings. And yeah, I was going to say concrete. That so is just a cash base, number, right? right? So right. that in, in and of itself. And I, I mean, I did it for Franklin because that that's in your catchment. Mm -hmm. I didn't for all the other towns because, well, frankly, that's a lot of work. Yeah. And, <laughs> and yeah. we're not opposed to doing that work. We just right. I didn't for this. This is this. really. I, I get that. I get that. Well, yeah. some of the pros major pushback we have uh, on this, and I understand it. I am a part of my town, you know, elected officials too, and so I, I get it. I understand where you're coming from. And the importance of, of what you need to do when looking out for your residents. And, you know, all the, you know, we've given the best answer we can to that. We intend to make changes moving forward. Um, you know, only you can ultimately decide what's best for your residents. So next year, we start. We 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 start to figure this out, and what we'll, we'll, you'll have to figure out is how to yes, make this will. look more equitable. Because it seems like it's probably too late to go to some of these other towns and see if they can help it. I yeah, our requests have all gone out. Yeah, for this, yes. But um, we've already started to have those conversations on really looking, you know, diving deep into this um, for. The town of Tilton, obviously, that was one of the reasons is we did get the pushback. Um, and again, this wasn't me coming here and saying, "I absolutely give me that twenty-six thousand. It's let's have a conversation about the services that we have, how much we do ask for, and what what is reasonable." You know, and, and I'm I don't think any of us are opposed to that number changing. Um, but as for why that twenty-six is there, unfortunately, that's been historic, and um, and, that's what I kind of and I haven't had the right. Oh, absolutely. We've already started that process. Um, unfortunately, we just I didn't have the time in the first year to really dig as deep into all of this as I would have liked to. Um, seems like it will come up again. It, it seems to always come up, so. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Thanks. So well, thank you very much. We'll respect yeah, the number, so and, and yeah, we'll, thank you. we'll call you and, and, and stay in touch with um, during the year as for how this portion of it is going along. Absolutely. Is there a budget we actually need to be around? Okay. So I'd love an opportunity to come and speak to them maybe mid-year so yeah. we can show you kind of where we're at okay. in our process. That would be great. Yeah, I absolutely will. I'll be in touch with, with Jeannie. <laughs> It was so nice. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for all your help. I appreciate all of it. Thank you. Again, I appreciate you guys listening to us. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thanks. Do I have a seat out there? I don't know. It's getting a little slick. Thank you again. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thanks so much. Drive safe. those extra hours so um, at the last meeting there was a question about what Dari's duties you know how they would shift and so and what would be added and so we took 
Gary took that, took a look at that, and put that into his job description. And I have a copy of that. I don't know if you want to do that now or. But won't we let Tim lead the way in? Yeah. <coughs> have him on public at all tonight? Um, I think. I, I, I was expecting we might have one for the um, <clears throat> letter of intent that you signed, but uh, you all signed it, so it, unless you want to discuss it, um, we, we are planning a non-public for Thursday night. But it's totally up to you if there's something you want to... I would like a non-public uh, briefly for personnel um, uh, meeting for wages. So right if now, we can fit it in. So let's see if we can get that in after um yeah. we'll put it after the Warren articles at the bottom of that six. Do you want to finish the Warren articles or do you want to start with Tim and then finish up the Warren articles? It, if it has to do with um, twenty nineteen budgeted wages, uh, it'd be helpful to know before tomorrow night um, if there's a change that needs to be made or yeah, some type of update. Right, but tomorrow night is the presentation of your budget, hopefully, uh, to the budget committee. For your budget. The selectman's budget. Um, yes. Yeah, we're at 715. Okay. I'm just wondering when Washington Air Water's coming in. Okay, so. All right, so I can. Go ahead. You want me to go through? All right, so what you have in your hands um, is pretty much uh, what. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, there is a, there was a change made from your last meeting pertaining to that. Did you tell? So it probably would be a good idea. What? I'm sorry. Uh, for them to have the non-public on the, the issue that we had discussed. What? What issue is that? Uh, the revenue and reimbursement. Oh, okay. Um, and, uh, Gail, is that what you're talking about? <clears throat> Tim? Excuse, I'm sorry. Um, Gail just told me that the, the Board of Selectmen's budget is not on the agenda for tomorrow night? Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, the be. budget committee discussed, discussed it uh, last two weeks about yeah. having it tomorrow night. It has to I, be because it yeah. had it's due February 1st to the, um, yeah. to the... Is it on the agenda? I can look. Text the chair. I didn't notice that it was on there. I'm looking. Uh, it just says, uh, call to order, Pledge of Allegiance, no, this is last week, so it hasn't been updated. So, and I haven't seen anything from the uh, secretary as yet. So their first public hearing is next week? Or the sixth is the first public hearing. Okay. But by that point, uh, they should have uh, had an opportunity to review the selectman's budget and Warren articles. And, uh, the public hearing is on their budget, right? That's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, if and I believe if they don't meet the, I, I feel like February 1st is a deadline for them to have their budget completed. Um, I'd have to look. They can't complete the budget. Is there any reason why we can't get our budget done? Um, well, we talk about it. Unless we get done. <laughs> I, I, uh, I'm ready to go. There, there is um, there's that one issue regarding so the pay. You have approved it. Yes, you have not approved land use, and um, and then cap, and then there's some changes that I've noted in here that okay. I have updates for that will be beneficial to your budget. You're very close. Go ahead with what you're doing. Okay, just keep in mind that the. Yep. Okay, so, um, well, first of all. If, if you will just humor me for a second, on the first page, you see the department request column, and that's now showing uh, $211 less than last year's budget. 
The tax implications are down below. I've listed the tax rate based on the department request right now because I don't have a completed selectman's budget, but once I do have the selectman's approved, uh, that number will be reflected down below in the appropriation area. And you can see that currently, based on the uh, department requested amount, the tax rate would go up five cents provided our revenues hold, our appropriations hold, and uh, overlay and more service credits. I've also listed out what the Warren article impact are on the right hand side there for each of these Warren articles. Um, uh, I personally was not in favor of one of them, but uh, I've also listed the balances of those capital reserve funds. Uh, you can see where it says 1231.18, that's the balance at the end of the year. The 19 available balance, uh, aside from Aside from uh, the um, capital reserve for uh, reval, which um, we're going to spend $74,104, I believe, or $71,004, uh, it's in the, the budget here, uh, in the notes, um, and that's to pay for the reval. We'll have a balance of $23,149 as of the end of the year. Uh, so we have more than enough money uh, as if we funded it for an entire year. The other item that you don't see on here is pertaining to the uh, land purchase and architectural and engineering costs. Depending upon how the board wants to handle this, we can put the projected bond payments into the operating budget or we can make uh, modifications on the floor. And I, I've got planning rates in various amounts um, and I can, I can go through that when we get to that point. On the second page, you'll see the... Can you get those numbers from the architect? Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. They're in your Warren article, which I understand you... Uh, we haven't got to that part, so I oh, can okay. ask that question. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. I thought... All right. I understood that you, you had to review them. We didn't get gotcha. that part. Okay. So in the, on the second page of the estimated revenues, so you can see our budgeted revenue is 2080000 We came in at $2.2 2 and there were a number of reasons for that. Uh, motor vehicle permits were very, very strong. And uh, we also had the sale of the town property at Business Park Drive. So we had some unusual things. If you look at the economy, what's happening with home prices and consumer confidence, uh, I, I'm not willing to stick a high number on all these motor vehicle lines uh, because it, it doesn't stand to reason that every year is going to be more and more auto sales than the year before. And granted, the, the registration fees are still going to be proportionate to the prior years, but um, I pref prefer to be somewhat uh, conservative there. So the bottom line here is that I'm uh, projecting a, a revenue decrease of roughly $15,000, which is uh, about three quarters of 1%. So, and that's factored into that tax rate impact on the first page under the department requested. So right now you're looking at a five cent increase in the tax rate, which represented uh, two thirds of one percent increase. Uh, if you go and start looking at the detail, um, I have I have cleaned up a lot of these comments. The budget committee has asked it, asked for line item comments uh, on all the departments. So I've um, just polished it up a little bit uh, so that it's appropriate for um, general public and doesn't have any uh, things that are shorthand. Um, on, the, on page three, you'll notice what looks like the copier spit out some black dots. And the, the black dotted items are things that I would like you to reconsider and uh, change the recommended amount. And when you see shaded items, those are items that have to be um, have to be decided upon when they appear in that column. Town hall maintenance and repairs on page three. So we the the board had approved twenty four thousand dollars for the uh, uh, the purpose of the. What's the number? Can we read the last five numbers? Oh sure, sure ninety nine four forty on page three. Town hall maintenance and repairs. If you follow the black dot. Right, right eight numbers on this one. Keep going. They're not on the. Keep going. One more. Just speak ahead. Right there. 
That's no. obvious. That, right yeah, there. I see that. Page two. So, uh, on uh, line 440 there, uh, we had budgeted for the central air and also the downtown tree lighting estimate. In addition to that, we have since spent some money and, uh, and it appears certain that we're going to have to have some additional monies budgeted for other general town hall repairs. So there was some money spent on uh, recabling downstairs, emergency lighting, I believe upstairs and downstairs. And so by adding $3,000 to this line, that would leave us about $1,825 for the balance of the year. Outside of the air conditioning and the downtown electric. Lighting? No, they're two different items. Um, emergency lighting, uh, I, I wasn't present when it was done, so I, I'm not exactly sure what that was. And then there was some work in the town clerk's office. J.P. Carter? Yeah, Is that J.P. Carter? All of, um, the deputy's wires, and they put the receptacles down in the floor. And so we did that now on a budget that's not approved. Was that this year? Or well, that was this year. That's, yeah, that's, that was just done a week, or, a week ago. Yeah. That was asked to be done last year. Okay, we didn't need the carpets. So, and we didn't do it last year, so now we've, the first of the year has come, and we're in a budget where we're not supposed to be spending money that we don't have to spend, because it's not really an improved budget, and we put, what did we do? The uh, rerouted the electrical. They, they rerouted the electrical, and then also they did the exit lighting for Town Hall and the Senior Center, and that was... Uh, they had approved, we had approved that almost nine months ago. But it wasn't done, so at December 31st, that approval should have died because that was the budget we approved it out of. We didn't approve it out of this budget. That's what I'm saying. I don't remember having yeah, this conversation. Uh, no, I've, spending I've, I've, those money out right. of this budget. Yeah, I, I believe it was. Um, it's all set up by Joyce. It was paid for, um, I, I, I think it was even paid for last week. Perhaps so. Paid for our 2019 funds. That's so correct. We're spending money before. The, the, well, the yeah. well, the idea is right. so that I'm, I'm, I just want to make sure I just want to make sure we have sufficient money in that line. So by adding three thousand dollars, and you'll see that that um, all these changes are going to net uh, to your favor, I think. Um, but by adding three thousand dollars, that would leave us an additional eighteen twenty-five uh, for the remainder of the year, provided those other two things are done and and um, the quotes are good on those. So that's one recommendation. That's not answering Catherine's question, Tim. I don't know. I don't know the answer to it. Okay. So um, the uh, the other item on this page is that um, we had a. Uh, premium holiday from our workers comp amount and that amounted to a reduction of um, twenty four thousand seven hundred seventy five dollars so uh, we can take advantage of that we um, through the reduced cost so the net for the uh, for the administrative budget uh, I'm recommending to be six hundred forty seven thousand five hundred twenty one dollars so that's lower than the approved six hundred sixty-nine thousand two hundred ninety-six. Second, anyone? We have a motion to approve so. the selectman's budget. Did we have a second on it? Well, second, so we can budget. No, the administration, administration portion of the budget. That for six hundred and forty-seven thousand five hundred twenty-one dollars. Okay. So we have a motion by Pat to approve, and she just stated the the amended approved. administrative budget. Mm -hmm. We have a second for that. I do. And Catherine has seconded that. And discussion. Catherine. Over to um, you. So, are we going to save the twenty-four thousand two hundred eighteen dollars in the bottom line? Yes. Well, 
Well, no, you spent three thousand there. You already took that out of it. I'm looking over here at the bottom line of the administrative budget. It says twenty four thousand two hundred and eighteen were down. That's correct. Yeah. So there are other changes because you did not approve um, cap last week. So that's still outstanding. That's twenty six thousand request. Right. So if we don't so there are other items. But I think it nets out to um, an addition, even if you approve the entire 26,000, an addition of about 3,800 total. Um, so most of these are most of these are reductions. Okay, great. On the uh, page five, on page five, uh, line 998, about the sixth or seventh one down, debt interest on 10. Uh, as I had mentioned, I was going to come back to the board uh, with a revised figure based on uh, our cash flow for 2019. And the board had approved 22,800. Um, in your last meeting when you approve this and I'm recommending 21,600 so it's a reduction of $1,200 so therefore the uh, finance requested uh, total would be 126,650 The, when we lock this in, which I have a commitment for, um, it will be for the year. Um, the two things that are that are pushing the amount of money is that I'm projecting we're going to have to borrow more earlier, um, somewhat dependent on what happens at town meeting with the Warren articles, and then um, and then the rate uh, increased. So moved. Second. Third. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? You know okay. Wonderful. All right. On the next page, um, that's why you don't have page numbers because I put I put holes in these. Uh, so that would be page six. On uh, the beginning of the land use department, the second item has a shaded um, mark in that column and that's for the land use technician. The board uh, needed to talk about the entire land use department but this was an open item uh, for the additional hours needed for administrative functions associated with planning board. March, January through March would be 16 hours per week and then budgeted at 24 hours per week April through December. And that's a $5,284 increase over uh, the uh, prior prior year. This is land use uh, technician hours. This was your one of your larger items to d decide tonight. Can we go to something that's not going to be? Sure. I can uh, point out that uh, planning board, I changed the department requests uh, to reflect the absence of alternate stipends. And I see I have an incorrect note there yeah, underneath the planning board. Here. I, yes, so okay. what I'm saying is that I, I have to omit where it says alternate, but okay. the black marks uh, reduce the department request to reflect the absence of alternate stipends. Uh, the I also put a note under the Conservation uh, Commission, the last item, Selectman removed $800 pertaining to two alternate stipend positions because the request was still $8,100. So, uh, all right, so skipping on, um, the only other item on page 9 uh, that was a change, we just received the Household Hazardous Waste, which is line 863, third from the bottom on page 9. And there's a black mark next to 3121. It's an increase of $167. Okay. 
Lakes Region Planning? Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. The household hazardous waste. Two Saturdays in yep. July, August. That's correct. So that that increase of $167, um, since, I mean, it, it doesn't seem like much, but because we're, you know, correcting other lines, it made sense to correct this. So that would make the recommended for the uh, that sanitation line $559,363, which is the increase of $167. Sanitation line to five hundred fifty-nine thousand three hundred sixty-three dollars. Second. We have a motion and the uh, second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Uh, the uh, there are two. Uh, changes that were based off of the personnel um, change the board made, which I believe is what Selectman Constantino referred to uh, to discuss. So, if you want to wait on those, uh, we can we can move on. But that's pertaining to um, pertaining to that wage. Uh, so the last item to consider. Uh, that needs to be dealt with is on the very last page outside agencies community action program they made a request of twenty six thousand dollars and uh, we need to know what the board would like to do i'll make a motion for twenty thousand i'll second the motion discussion my fair share oh, that's still too high Catherine, any discussion? Come on. I know you're thinking. Oh, it's hard. I do. I, I'm, I'm a little angry at them that they sent this out. It took us to tell them it was inequitable. Otherwise, it wouldn't be changing. I mean, so did they, what, were they vicarious or something? I don't know. I don't know. And it just, if you just compare us with North Korea, it is so off, but I'm torn. I don't, I understand that if we cut this too much, it will be difficult for them. I don't want them to cut staff, but on the other hand, yeah, I'm torn. So go to somebody else. <laughs> no, I, and I, I feel the same, you know, as you say, it's definitely not equitable how it ended up getting that way. And, uh, it just won't go have it to, mm -hmm. to um, level fund things and pass them through and keep going and that amount just sort of carried over and, and then it got reduced by Franklin when they did it so there then it got more skewed so but I think that, that that's a good number because we're still keeping it going because there's no time to get more money from the other towns and next year I'm hoping that we much more equitable and um, that a little upset. Right? Anybody else? Do you want they've given us. A, they've given us a commitment to to change it and be more equitable next year, and I think it, it's our our we're not going to our taxpayers aren't going to suffer on the account of it. Move the question. Okay. Question. All those in favor of funding the community action program at twenty thousand dollars say aye. 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 Mm -hmm. Are you pondering or are you going? I'm pondering. You only got a couple seconds. Okay. Aye. Twenty thousand, we get three eyes. Uh all those opposed? Aye. Oh, no. Opposed. I oppose for different reasons. And Peter, no doubt, but I oppose. Two notes. Okay. So we'll move to 20,000. All right, very good. So uh, that. They come back to 20 next year. So that leaves uh, land use and then the police wage issue. Uh, 
There are a couple of changes based on the wages that the uh, board had voted uh, to change based on the, um, the amount being paid to the employee, the wage okay. that the board voted. This is the Regarding oh. the additional revenue to the town. Oh. So that changed um, that changed the bottom line PD budget by six hundred and uh, six hundred and twenty four dollars on the uh, benefits line over and above the uh, the salary. You'll have to give us new figures on that. Yes. Right. So on under the land use. The land use under the land use, use technician. You have what he would like to is increase the hours of the land use technician, and then he would like to make his um, job description a little bit more diversified towards economic development and geared towards that. I would, I personally, my own personal opinion, and this is just me personally, I feel that we need to wait a year. I think that we've made enough changes to the land use department um, with different programs, different software, different changes, and Al being out in the field more. We have not seen the results of those changes enough. Um, adding more hours and more money into that department right now and not seeing any of the results I think that I would like to see a better plan instead of just a job description that changes it. I would like to see a better makeup of a plan. This is what would happen. This is what's going to take place. Uh, not only in the job description for the town planner, but a job description on the technician and what the duties were for that. I, I think the whole layout and plan in going forward for the year. I'd like to see it laid out more for us to be better prepared than to just put it in a budget and say I'd like to increase our hours and this is what she would like to do. This is what I would like her to do. My own opinion on it, I think that we're increasing, we're asking for, an, uh, you know, to buy, buy some land build the police department, we're increasing the budget, and I think that we can get by with this for another year. Peter? I agree with Pat. My thoughts are that I don't think that we should be changing job descriptions, plans, and the way we're doing things until we can master the things that we're supposed to be doing already, and that's enforcement. I don't see enough enforcement or following through on things. Better or articulated. Better plan. Exactly. Um, but I, I think we need to master the task at hand first before we move on. So I, I can't see any changes. But I'd like to, but I, this is the part I'd like to see it done first. Joe, I'm calling to kind of in line with what you just said, John. Um, I think economic development is an important piece mm -hmm. for the town as well as for planning and, and utilizing the skills that we have over there going forward will uh, help us considerably. That said, um, the, the, I don't know, I'm uneasy about what we do now and, and perfecting that because there, there have been and there are things that we're kind of not doing in the job description that currently is in place, I think. That's my take on it, and, and I'm hesitant to, to, to change what we've got going down uh, until that is as good as we can make it. Just me. 
Catherine. I agree with all of you. I think um, we have a lot of work to do before we start making those type of changes. Um, from what I could find, the current job description is from 2019, I mean 14 that was signed. So, you know, we may, we, the Board of Selectmen, haven't made all the changes to this. We haven't discussed the new avenue the planner wants to take and the technician who wants to take her. So I agree with you. Well, yeah, I mean, he came, the town planner came to us in November, and our minutes reflect that, but, you know, we want to make these changes, and there would be a plan, but there's no plan. Right. So, here we are. Now's the time to talk about it. Trying to finish a budget, and we still don't have a plan, so I do I agree with all of you. So, the idea Next is to go with a plan. remove any numbers in that budget that pertain to changes mm -hmm. in hours or a job description. Which is not to say, of course, that she is not a valuable oh, no. Absolutely. Because oh. she is. And I think we've made progress in our planning department, certainly from when I first started being a selectman originally. Uh, our head and shoulders above that. Um, but that can go, that can Correct. I'm going to make that motion. I'm not sure what that number would be, um, but the number. I'll reflow it. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to um, change a lot of different numbers. Change a lot of things. Yeah. Um, so perhaps you could make those changes, and then we can make the motion. Yeah, they're going to change a couple of different departments because uh, the taxes and stuff are an admin. That's okay. Remove the extra hours. The extra hours. Yeah. Anything related to that. Something why did on? you have the why did you have the town planners salary shaded the uh, most of the salary items <coughs> are shaded because uh, they're coming from a different area the the items that I said um, need to be reviewed are in that one column only to the right of the department request so if you see a shaded item there but that oh, okay. that indicates to me that these are calculated figures based on another um, another worksheet okay all right so the only thing left now is in non-public um, yes yep. nobody seconded that motion we're gonna wait till he comes up to okay years. Okay. Right. So we that uh big for uh we're waiting for a big to want to do it on public. Make a motion that we go into non public for our say ninety one A colon three uh personnel compensation. Second. Constantino, yes. Fog, yes. Jessamine. Jessamine, yes. Scanlon, yes. Check your emails at 7.15. We, we are red, red, red is on. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So make a motion to seal the uh, minutes of the non-public meeting until such, well, actually permanently as they pertain to personnel matters. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. I didn't get an email from the budget committee. Are you looking under your board of selectmen? Yes. What do you have next, Tim? Okay, I have uh, reprinted <coughs> your uh, the changes that you've made and have reflowed them throughout your selectmen's approved budget. And that includes changes to the land use uh, department, the administrative department for taxes uh, uh, and such, and uh, the police department for salary, taxes, and retirement, et cetera, et cetera. 
and um, merit. So those changes have all been made. If you look at the front page of your of this report that does not have the hole punches, that's how you can tell these apart. And um, so this is the this is the report with the changes, including the um, community action program vote. So all told, your selectmen's approved budget stands at five million one twenty eight five twelve prior to the sewer commission. Would the board like to vote on this, the revenues and sewer commission and warrant articles? So we haven't finished all. Or, oh, that's articles. right. Yeah, you haven't. Five million. One twenty-eight five twelve. I have a question. Yes. Where is the um, the the uh, surveillance cameras? So, uh, so for public works. So those are not in here. I have that on my list to discuss with you. Okay. All right. So there was something else in PD that we were supposed to discuss. Uh, I don't believe so. Reconsidering the eighth officer? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, had, I had nothing flagged in the police department other than Be number nine. Um, all right, so we're going to make a motion to approve five million one hundred twenty-eight thousand five hundred twelve dollars. That's correct. Where is it though? It, it's well, on the well, very front page in the right column. Selectman's approved budget. Well, this is this is prior to the warrants. This is the op this is the operating budget. Do you all see it? And those incorporate all the changes you've made tonight. All right. Can, uh, did you make a motion and second it? There was no second yet. I made a motion twice. Second. We have motion and a second. Under discussion, may I say? Discussion. Speak up. Uh, I recognize Pat Constantino. Okay. So under, um, under, uh, well, we don't even have selectmen's business here, but I'm going to bring it up anyway. The senior center had um, frozen pipes the other day, and I'm bringing this up for your consideration. We had to call out and get the frozen pipes fixed, and it was $480, which we did pay out of our donations, but we're asking, the executive committee is asking the, the selectmen to, to actually pay for that under building and maintenance funds. It was frozen underneath the kitchen where they had opened up the, uh, where they repaired the floor underneath and there's no insulation. We've never had frozen pipes underneath the kitchen part at all. And Ever. Can I ask you how that relates to the motion? In the well, if we do, they have to add $480 to the okay. budget because he doesn't have enough money in his building and maintenance. You don't think there's $480 in this? I don't. Somewhere, no one ahead of time, no, because he only has $1,825 left over. So we'll take it out of That will take $480 out of it. Well, so you're taking that out of the town hall line? Uh, building maintenance. Yeah, that's the Town right. hall maintenance repairs. Uh, no, this would, this would actually be under, uh, no, it would be paid out of uh, the yeah. Grange building maintenance. Okay, so that's for discussion. So we have a motion in the uh, second. Three. Do you think we'll be able to find it? On Bottom of page three. That motion. Do you think we'll be able to find it? I don't think so. Any more discussion on that motion? Any more discussion on that motion? Because I got caught the question. So we have a motion in the second. Or somebody takes it no question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Sure. All right. So that'll go in on um, page three, third. A line from the bottom, uh, number 480, Grange Building Maintenance, and we'll add $480 to this like that's approved. That's not the motion. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm sorry. Sorry. Oh. That's right. 
Yeah. 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 I've been told by the uh, sewer administrator that the <coughs> budget for sewer commission is level. So both in the revenue and on the front page, um, you'll see uh, just above the total operating budget, $508,533 for the sewer commission. Does the board, the board wish to vote on that or just by consensus leave it? So moved. So we have a motion for $508,533. $508,533. Second. Yeah. Aye. All those. <coughs> you're, you're scratching your head. Are you tired or are you frustrated? Uh, I would, I would, before I'd vote for half a million dollars, I'd like to see something more detailed than one piece of a, a line, but I understand that sewer is a necessary thing. I get how it works. You realize those are user fees <laughs> passed through I, uh, as well. I, I pay those user fees, so I get it. I get it. I understand. I think so. 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 I Okay, so that makes your total operating budget five million six hundred thirty-seven thousand forty-five dollars. Would you like to vote on the revenues at this point of two million sixty-five thousand? So moved. So second. Okay. Mm -hmm. Aye. Aye. Okay, we have a motion and a second on the table. Board, any other discussion? Who seconded it? I did. Peter. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Unanimous. Okay. So on to your Warren articles. Uh, I'll just direct your attention again to the, the balances as of 1231.18 for the highway equipment cap reserve has $35,851 in it. If we place 35000 into it, it'll bring it to 70851 We're going roughly. to wait to hear from the Public Works Department on that. On Thursday. On Thursday, along so with the Article 4. Yeah, so Tim, let me just okay. tell you, because we started it. So Article 1 and 2 were fine. Article 3 and Article 4, the selectman wanted to have um, Kevin speak to those. Although I think I think he has had a conversation with Tim, but we can certainly have Kevin come in and speak to it. Um, Article five, I um, had recommended <coughs> ten thousand in the reserve. Uh, Tim had recommended zero based on the balance that's in the account, and my recollection is the selectmen wanted to stay with the ten thousand. Tim, I don't so, know if you want to. Yeah. So what you could do. Uh, you could catch it up uh, an entire year ahead just by adding uh, $6,851. So that would bring it up to $40,000 uh, th through the end, or $30,000 through the end of um, uh, 2019. So that's one way to look at it. So we have five years Norm to put this together. Right. Normally you would have. The contract is for how much? The, so the contract that is currently being paid this year is uh, it's on it's listed on page uh, two I believe I'm sorry page three under the reval and let me just look it up for you so I don't misspeak. Uh, seventy one thousand. Seventy yep it's seventy one thousand and four dollars I believe uh, it's yes. on page top of page three so that's that is by contract and that's being paid um, 
out of the, and that fund. That's my concern. If we're putting away thirty thousand dollars, or a total, of, we'll have a total of thirty if we go with the sales. Right. Um, eventually, that's got to catch up to us because you can't lay out seventy four and have thirty. I mean, well, eventually you, you're going to have to pay that excess, right? right? So you have a balance of 94153 right now. We have an excess of more than 20, we have an excess of 23000 Had this Had this been level funded over the years, then we would have basically nothing in there and we'd be putting 20000 in. So we've raised and appropriated more than we needed for this final um, contract. So that's what that's what I'm saying. That we're okay. we're more than a year ahead based on our normal twenty thousand a year. But I understand if you want to add to it. It's just um, it, what happens if the contract goes up next time. Well, exactly. So it's it, it's, lower. it's possible. Yep. Yep. So if we add six thousand eight hundred and fifty one instead of ten thousand, we're at even thirty thousand. Right, not and including the, the interest year through we, the year. And then the we, following year we put in 20000 Right. And then 20000 and 20000 20. 20 per year, yeah. So if we're putting in 20, 10 is half that. Yep. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah. I'd say stick with the 10. Okay. Census is 10. 10. 10. Okay. Okay, article, article 6. I don't know who that is. It's not me. Fine. Article 6. Um, the selectman wanted to know what was in, what is in the fund now. 9,000 and some odd. 9,341. Okay. It's right there on your front page. Okay. So and uh, 2,000 was um, spent this last year. The Conservation Commission are the... spent this year? 2,000 to the uh, Winnesquam... Uh, watershed, right? Uh, so the, the conservation commission are agents for that fund, and um, uh, so by putting this two thousand in, it'll bring it up to eleven three forty one. According to the conservation commission, there's work to be done uh, this coming year around Jay's Marina and the um, uh, the condos that are along along that edge. I guess there's the causeway. No, no. Personally, I think that if we have that much in there, if we put that 2000 in, we could do, get these guys that are up there to do what they did on Silver Lake. Lake and but we don't have money. a proposal for, from them. No, it's Try January, them. but. We don't have a request. Well, it's January. We, we well, have to start getting them as. I would hope they plan ahead. Okay. What is the average amount of money that's been given out each year? 2000. About it hasn't been annually. No, it was, it was, yeah, for a long time right. we didn't do any. We did probably have 9,000 dollars. And likewise, we've fallen behind now. And, uh, the link here. Um, okay, seven. We have a consensus on the 2,000? Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. Um, article seven, this is the island. Um, do we need this? Yes. Now we were told that we did not need the second. No. I, well, it was only going to be a quick claim. Yeah, they but we still need to. to we no. Um, Northfield has has a parallel, I guess, um, article on there because you actually have to now. You voted to uh, I don't look think, into it, right? And now you have to actually convey it, and so this says that you're going to vote to accept the conveyance and Northfield is going to is going to put a warrant out article saying they're going to convey it and then once that's agreed to then we do the quick claim deed. Got it. Question. Uh, procedural question. Uh, what happens if Northfield says no when it's done? That, yeah. Then we just keep doing what we do. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. But they uh, um, they want to convey it. Oh, there are several people yeah. who want to oh, convey it. Okay. There's 8,000 people or okay. whatever in Northfield, so we'll see how the voters feel. Okay, Article 8, this is the property purchase. Yep. Um, and I think Catherine had some question about this. Yep. Um, so at our meeting, was it last week? Time was going by me. Um, I asked if we purchased this. 
and we did not build the police station, well, I asked, if we did not build the police station, we would still purchase this? And the answer was yes. Well, but this warrant wait, article, is, it, is this, we're not non-public? I said purchase this. Okay. Yeah, but going forward, do we have to, does this have to be discussed in the warrant? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Okay, though, right? No. But it, so, yeah, no, good question. Okay. All right. I think at this point the letter of intent has been um, signed, right? It hasn't been signed on the other end, though. And that, and that is, that's the okay. portion We're gonna that's been. Okay, we're going to the budget committee tomorrow night. Yeah. No. Well, you then can't. you're going to forget about it. We're not. That's an article that's going to for the budget committee. Do they have they, to get these tomorrow? They should. No. Have a oh. February 6th. Right. It could. It could. They it's should. With the, if you can yeah. get them to sign on the other end, then fine. But they, because you changed that sentence, that it's going to be in the warrant article and so on and so forth. The public, then. That's well, they the, they agreed to that they um, on the other end. So I, okay. I yeah, I'll send it over tomorrow, and I'm and, sure. You know, I mean, it's a verbal agreement at this point, yep. so, Catherine, I, I would say that it would be, it's up to you, it's just a verbal agreement on this, that well, part. I, I, I think um, Catherine had another issue, not to speak for you, um, but... Well, I told you what my issue yeah. was with it, so I don't know if you want to go into public for me to say it, or... I'm fine with it, we can do that. Do we, do we have to? Do yeah. Do you want to... Do you want to... Do you, wanna, the do you want to go through the other? Well, that would be a thing. There's only two yeah, others to go through. On what? Wait. On three, everybody talk. <laughs> okay. I'm getting good at this now. Um, so, Jeannie, what were you saying? I, I was going to suggest maybe you go through the rest of the Warren articles and we take this at the end. There. So we'll skip. That's part what we were trying to tell you, John. There is a financial decision to be made there too right. regarding payments. So we'll skip Article Eight and Article Nine because they go together, and then Article Ten is no is a no-brainer, and Article Eleven. Yeah, Article Ten will read uh, five million six thirty-seven zero forty-five. You think so? Tentatively. <laughs> um, doesn't that have to include the warrant? No. Yeah. Because the warrant articles are separate. Say it again. Five million. Five million six thirty-seven zero forty-five. 637045. It's uh, right where it says total operating budget on the line. Got it. So that'll be um, that will be that number there. No. It won't. It won't be right. Well, if we change for this, it, it for the selectmen's recommended. Won't that be the, the amount that the budget committee puts in there? The board well, of selectmen recommended the, the sum of ours. Is right. The second. See, this is the second. Yeah. 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 And then us. They see both numbers. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously, we don't have the <coughs> budget committee's recommended budget yet. So. Okay. Okay. Make a motion we go into non public okay. RSA 91A colon 3 uh, acquisition of property. Constantino, yes. Five, yes. Scandal, yes. Yes. Oh, you jump. You jump, Jay. We're red. Yeah, we are red, red. So I'll make a motion to seal the minutes for the non public session uh, as they pertain to the acquisition or sale of real property until such time as uh, those feelings might be finalized. Second. <coughs> we have a motion second on the sealing of the minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> so sealed. So there's one more warrant article that we that's not on here. That's Tim's. Did you want to speak to this? Uh, I did, but I also need to speak to them about uh, uh, the money on these two warrant articles, uh, how they want to handle that. So the only other thing was the budget committee last week, after reviewing the IT budget, had made a suggestion of creating a technology uh, capital reserve fund. 
Um, we had talked about the when when we do go to switch accounting software, uh, it could it's going to be somewhere in the twenty to twenty five thousand dollar range if we go the route that most towns have done. Is that so, a definite that you're switching accounting software? No. What's that? Okay. I'm sorry. He I said, said if. No, I said when. Uh, well, at some point there okay. there will most likely be a change. This the package that we're on now is in maintenance mode. Um, I mean, it works works fine, but um, you always have to wonder how long the last programmer or two will last there, and if they move on, uh, it could be that could be a big change. That's not to say that we have to do anything. And uh, my after thinking about it over the last week, I've gone back and forth, but um, I feel as though if I would prefer rather than to appropriate money and put money aside for something like that that if we have changes during the year, which we invariably do, that we look at, you know, towards the end of the year, maybe encumbering money for something like that if we have a particularly <coughs> good year, you know, and take advantage of it and just, um, you know, look at those types of expenses like that. So that, that would also incorporate the surveillance system at Public Works, uh, thought to be around $13,000, um, you know, the upgrade there uh, over and above what we have. So. Uh, so anyway, I just wanted to, to discuss that with you. The, like I said, the budget committee was in favor of it. Um, I hadn't really given it a great deal of thought. I know it had been discussed some in the past years. Um, so what do you, uh, back up, what do you want to do with it now? Nothing, nothing. I'm, I'm saying that, uh, that I would be in favor of just using money that we've already appropriated at the end of the year if we have a particularly good year to make a change. We don't have to make a change. Uh, regarding our accounting software at this point. As far as I'm concerned on that, uh, the on Article 8 and 9... For, uh, for women, for the county software and the, the surveillance cameras? That, right, and, and I wouldn't be looking to do anything with the accounting software in the next year or two. What, what so. are Right now, it's about the information technology budget. It's not on, and it's, it's not on there. The article. Article. I, I would, it's, it's not on there. It's not on there. Because the budget committee had recommended it, and I'm saying, no, it's not necessary. We, If we have a good year and we have money left over at the end of the year, let's take advantage of that and not raise so and appropriate it. No. Nothing's ever been done with that. Yes. No, no. So, I mean, if, if you wanted to make one particular change, if you wanted to add the money uh, when we have a, a firm number on the uh, surveillance upgrade, I'll bring that forward to you and we can always amend it, um, you know, at one of the hearings or, or a town meeting. Okay. So. One other question. With, in light of everything that happened last week with um, the flooding and that, are we sufficiently covered to make any necessary changes to prevent that from happening or the drain again? Do we have sufficient money in these budgets and will that need to be adjusted? Well, and I was going to discuss that with you on Thursday. I asked Kevin to put together a diagram that you all could look at to see what actually happened. And I, I thought we could talk about that on Thursday. But to your point of asking, um, I, you know, how to prevent that in the future, I think we've got a solution to that um, in terms of the damage that we've seen. The insurance company um, was here that morning, 9 o'clock, and will pay for the damage that we experienced. Um, Tim has a question, I think, about we discovered some things relative to the security, the alarm system. Deferred maintenance items that weren't handled in the past. And that may, you may, I don't know what that looks like, what that number would be. Right. Um, we don't know at this point. So I have some slight tweaking to do to cover for right, right now, so, so earlier in the budget, the, the board added $3,000 to the town hall maintenance and repairs line of which $1,800, $1,825 is available uh, from this point forward. So it's thin. Uh, it's thin. And so, we but what, it. so do we know what the solution is? For, you know what that solution is? To prevent that water leak again? No. Yes. Do you know a, a cost estimate 
a roundabout estimate? A little bit of labor and some noise. Yeah. Yeah. So, so effectively, the you know up on the roof you have the drain pipe that came down, mm -hmm. and then went out, it went down to the basement, it went under the sidewalk, and out to the catch basin. Mm -hmm. So the catch basin has a plastic collar around it. Yeah. So, catch basin's here. The pipe is here. But there's no hole. <laughs> it, when they replaced the sleeve, when they redid the road, they just sort of dropped in the sleeve, which blocked our pipe. Right. So. So it didn't. Yeah. It did. It didn't go it. into the catch basin. So Kevin right away called the state and asked for permission to cut a hole in the in the uh, collar to fix that. And I I believe that he's I think he's already done it. Um, when did they re-sleeve it? When they ground the road down and put the new thing in and adjusted the height next to the curb? Because remember the curb was rising up? And didn't we do that after that happened? No, this no. was last summer. That drain has been there for a long time. Yeah. This isn't the one that no. we no. did up back with the trench no. patch? That's what I thought. That's what I thought, too. But they wide before that. Peter, when, when they redid the road last summer, School Street was last summer, right? And they, no, no. The year before? Two. And when they two ground three. it down yeah. to, to get enough, because of the curb, they were getting so high up on the curb, they ground it down, so they replaced right. those, whatever you call them, the, the, the collar, and they put a plastic sleeve in there. Well, so common it. sense would have said they would have seen a pipe coming in before they sleeved it, and they would have said something. Common sense, yeah. It was flush. So we good with that? So we know. Yes, sir. I I think we're pretty close to like being done here this evening. Am I correct? <laughs> no. It's no. I I need to discuss uh, how. Uh, how you want to present the how we pay for article 8 and 9 <clears throat> so uh, if if you'll permit me uh, so rates have come in anywhere from uh, 3 to just under 4 percent for between 5 and 10 year uh, short-term notes and that represents anywhere from uh, on the land only from uh, about 9.7 cents per thousand up to 16 cents per thousand depending upon the length of term and then um, on the land and architectural and engineering costs six hundred and seventeen thousand dollars combined uh, the the ten year would be roughly 15 cents per thousand and the five year would be roughly 27 cents per thousand so uh, so what we would need to do is if um, if article 8 passes well two things number one I can have the rates quoted in such a way that the first payment is due in 2020 so it increases the interest slightly but not a great deal um, because of the way the payments are then structured so if we were to close on this property the end of uh, April let's say the first payment would be due uh, in the new budget year so we would but then budget it for 2020 if uh, the board wants to um, upfront cost that that we'd have to put the you know some type of budget into our uh, debt our long-term principal and interest uh, for this 2019 calendar year to account for any payments that we'd make during 19 based on the um, that article so what could be done is um, uh, you know we'd have to we'd have to have some firm numbers to be able to select from and then uh, contingent upon uh, approval at town meeting then uh, motion those to be put into those lines uh, at the floor what's your recommendation or you can buy it outright uh, the land would be about 70 cents per thousand what's your recommendation uh, my recommendation uh, it's it's stiff but the five year is probably the the, it's the least expensive in terms of interest, um, but it just depends on 
uh, so many other factors. Um, and, you know, how it depends on five years. How much is it on a hundred thousand dollar house? Uh, land and building for five years. Land and building mm -hmm. uh, on a hundred thousand dollar house, two hundred seventy dollars. So it's more like five hundred bucks on a two hundred thousand dollar house, which is not an opulent thing at all. So five hundred bucks, and we don't have anything on that property but grass and a lot. It's not. Can I ask a question? These are the worn articles. We don't need these for tomorrow night. We need no. these for the, the next week. So yeah. therefore, can we just digest this and bring it back up at the next time, seeing as it's 5 after 9 o'clock at night? And it's like a I, I don't know how you could do these numbers at this hour, but I can't. May I, well, may I make a suggestion, though? I, I would go with the recommendation of the finance director on this one. Thursday. 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 I don't want to talk about okay. that. All right, I will. Uh, I'll I'll give you some uh, things to look at Thursday. Yeah, and then idea. for tomorrow night, uh, if I could just clarify um, uh, that the the notes will go in here. I will. Um, I, I did put a note in here that uh, depending upon the the passage of those Warren articles, that the principal and interest could change. Other than that, um, I will give the budget committee a document that looks very similar to this, uh, just leaving them a place to be able to start approving uh, and putting their own figures into it uh, without objection, including the tax rate, uh, the projected tax rate here. Um, Mr. Okay. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Oh, I'm in favor. Aye. Joseph, make sure you read through the polls. All those opposed? The eyes have it. <coughs> Halfway out the door. <laughs> You're funny. Yeah, I'm a funny guy. I just forwarded you an email I got from Kim Dad. About, um, oh, I see. The guys have been doing it for winter. Um, it's extremely happy. <laughs> and once again, you missed it.